Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will develop a RESTful API with Flask and Python. An API or application programming interface is a way for two different pieces of software to communicate with each other. In the web platform, APIs help make data available to other applications. REST APIs are APIs built using the representational state transfer architecture style. Primary feature of RESTful APIs are that they are stateless. What does this mean? The statelessness means that every HTTP request happens in complete isolation. When the client makes an HTTP request, it includes all the information necessary for the server to fulfill the request. The server never relies on information from previous requests from the client. This tutorial will give you quick hands-on in the basics of REST API development using Python and Flask. Flask is a popular web framework and we will use SQL Alchemy and RESTful from this framework. Flask is a Python framework to build web application and REST APIs. Its main job is to route incoming HTTP requests to appropriate functions in the application. SQL Alchemy is a Python SQL library and an object relational mapper. It will map our employee class to the database table and it enables communication with the database. Before we begin coding, let's go over the requirements. For this tutorial, you'll need Python installed on your machine, an IDE, PyCharm, or any text editor will do. And we'll need to install the following libraries, Flask, Flask SQL Alchemy, Flask RESTful. Our goal is to build a simple API that exposes data related to employees such as employee name, gender, and salary, we will store our data in a SQLite DB. If this packs your interest, let's go ahead and create a new PyCharm project. We will create this API in a virtual environment. Virtual environment allows us to create an isolated Python environment where all required packages for the project are installed. For example, we will install Flask, SQL Alchemy and Flask RESTful within our project's virtual environment. There are steps to create virtual environment directly from the command prompt. However, PyCharm automatically creates a virtual environment for us. Let's open PyCharm and create a new project. You can rename the project as you wish. I am calling it Flask API. As you can see, PyCharm is busy creating the virtual environment and it will set the path for Python interpreter. If it fails to find the Python interpreter, then you can manually set it. We can use Python's built-in package manager tool called pip to install libraries. In the PyCharm's terminal, let's issue pip install commands. First, let's install Flask. So I'll issue pip install flask and hit enter. This will go ahead and install the flask library. Then we will install SQL Alchemy with pip install flask dash SQL Alchemy and hit enter. Last, we will install the flask restful library. So I'll issue pip install flask dash restful. This will install the restful library. If the installation is successful, we should see these libraries in the left pane. We can expand the external library folder and under site packages, we should see these libraries there. Let's go ahead and set up an initial Flask server. We will create a new Python file in the project's root directory. I'll call the file app.py. It is recommended to name your file app.py so you don't have to set the environment variables later on. By default, Flask looks for app.py file at startup. I'll go ahead and open the file. Let's go ahead and import the required libraries. For now, let's just import Flask. First, we will need to create an instance of Flask for this application. I'll call it app and set it equal to Flask and pass it the application name. Let's declare a route that will respond to the base URL under the route, we define a function that will return text hello. This is our minimal application. 
Now we can start the server and test our application. It gives us a URL, IP address followed by port 5000. When we navigate to this URL, we should see the word hello in our browser. Congratulations, your app is set up. Now we can move on and enhance this application. Let's go ahead and import the rest of the libraries. So from Flask, we will also import the request, JSONify and make response. And to route incoming URL, we will make use of resource and API from Flask RESTful. And to interact with database, we will import SQL Alchemy. We will need to do a few housekeeping things. First, we'll need to create an instance of the API for our app. This will help us with the URL routing. We will also add a SQLite database to our app. So we will pass the database URI to the app.config and provide it the database file name. If the file exists, this will connect to the database. If it does not, it will create a new database file. Let's also set the track modification to false as the Flask server will complain about this later on. So this won't bring up any warning in the console window. We will create an instance of SQL Alchemy and set it to DB. SQL Alchemy will help us interact with the database. Now let's define a class representing an employee. And using the employee class, we will store the data and retrieve the data from this employee table from the database. This employee class inherits from the db.model. I'll define attribute for this class. For example, we have a primary key called ID. This is of type integer and it is auto incrementing. Then we have employee first and last name and gender. These are string data type. Last, we'll define the salary and this will be a float type. This class will return self. Self represents the instance of the employee class. By using the self keyword, we can access the attributes of employee class. Next, we are going to set up the database. We are going to run few Python instructions directly from Python console to set up the database. Just an FYI, we will use the Python interpreter to execute the following Python commands. We can invoke the Python CLI by entering Python in the PyCharms terminal. First, we will import the DB which we define in our app.py file. Remember, DB is the instance of SQL Alchemy and this will assume the responsibility of mapping our employee class to the database. We will call the db.createAll method to create the tables and the database. Next, we will create few employee records. So for this, we will import employee class from the app. Using the employee, we can add records to the database. So let's go ahead and add a row to the database. So I'm gonna paste the code. We have declared the EMP variable, set this equal to the employee class. And in the parentheses, we are setting the employee attributes values first name, last name, gender, and salary. And then we can call db.session.add and provide this variable emp to the add function. And then we simply commit this to the database. Similarly, I'll go ahead and add another record. I'll paste in uh, the employee details, then add and commit this to the database. We can check if the records are in the database by querying the database. We can call the query all function on the employee. This lists all the records in our table. Congratulations, your database is up and running and you can interact with it using Python. So far, we have a basic server listening on our local port and connected to a database. Let's enhance our application to work as an API servicing incoming HTTP requests. The main building block provided by Flask RESTful is a resource based class that defines the routing for one or more HTTP methods for a given URL. Resource class gives us easy access to HTTP methods such as get, post, put, and delete. We will define a get employee class using resource class get method. The get method has a reference of self. 
this will return all employee records. So we will query all the employee records from the database and save them in a variable. And since there are multiple employee records, we will save them in a list called EMP underscore list. In a for loop, we will loop through the employees variable, which has all the employee rows. And in the EMP data variable, we are mapping the employee attributes in a key value pairs. So this gives us a dictionary of employee. Then we append EMP data dictionary to the EMP list. Finally, we return this list in the return statement. So when the get employee class is called, it will return the list of employee records. Moving on, we will define a class that responds to the post request. So I will add a class add employees with the post method. Under post, we will check if the sent request is JSON. Then we will declare a variable and set this equal to employee class. And in the parentheses, we map the employee attributes to the incoming JSON data. For example, first name to the request.json first name. Then last name, gender, and salary. We will add this EMP variable to db.session.add function and commit this record to the database. Upon successful insert, we return the EMP variable back in a JSON format. And if this request was not in a proper JSON format, we return an error with a message that the request must be JSON. Next, we will define a class to update an existing employee record. In this URL, we expect an employee ID as a parameter. So the app knows which employee records we want to update. I'll create a class called update employee with a put method. Notice we pass in the ID that is sent by the user in the URL. Once again, we check if it is a valid JSON request. And if it is so, then we query the database with the incoming ID. If the employee does not exist, then we return an error not found. Else, we map the employee attribute with incoming data from the request. I'll map the emp.firstname to request.json first name. I'll go ahead and map the remaining attributes. Then we commit this to the database and inform the user that the record is updated. In the else part, we return a message that it is not a valid JSON request. Last, we will define a class that will delete an employee record. This will give us a complete CRUD API. The delete method is similar to put method. I'll define a delete employee class and the method is delete. And similarly, we will pass in the incoming ID to it. We query the database with incoming ID. And if the employee does not exist, we return not found error. Otherwise, we pass in the employee record to the delete function and commit this change to the database. In the return statement, we inform the user that the provided ID is deleted. This is our create, read, update, and delete, or CRUD API. At the moment, we have the classes defined, but the API does not know how to route a request to a particular class. So we need to register the route with the add underscore resource function. I'll call the API dot add underscore resource function and I'll provide it the class name, for example, get employee comma the URL. For the base URL, I'll pass the forward slash. Now, anytime I invoke the base URL, it will map to the get employee class and return the employee records. Following this pattern, I'll go ahead and add in the route mapping for add, update, and delete routes. For the last two, we have declared a parameter called ID of type integer, since we need the employee ID to update and delete a record. Last, I'll add in the boilerplate if the name is main, then run the app. I'll go ahead and save all the changes. Our API is ready and we can go ahead and test it. I'll run the server with flask run command and copy the base URL. We will test this API in the Postman application. In the Postman, I will issue a GET request with the base URL and click the send button. This is a GET request and it is invoking the base URL.
This method returns all the employee records. Let's move on and test the post request. From the dropdown, select post and make sure the URL is correct. I have added the keyword add after the base URL. In the body of the request, I am supplying JSON data with employee attributes. Make sure the type is JSON. I'll go ahead and hit the send button. And it's a success. It returns the employee data back to us. We can test this if the record is inserted to the database by switching to get method and calling it. I'll click the send button and we have a new record with the ID of three in the database. Congrats, we have built a RESTful API with Flask and it is working as expected. Let's go ahead and update the employee ID three. Let's say we have made a mistake in the employee name and we want to update the employee. I'll switch to a new tab and make sure I'm calling the put method and in the URL pointing to update and we are supplying the employee ID here. In the body, I am supplying the updated employee name. I'll make sure that it is a JSON type. I'll click send and it returns the message updated. We can switch to get and invoke the method and our employee name is updated for the ID three. Last, we will check the delete method. We will check the URL and supply the employee ID. I'll click the send button and we get the desired message. We can switch back to the get method again and click the send button. This time around, we only have two records in the database. So our delete method is working as well. This is our complete REST CRUD API in Flask. This is all for now. Happy coding. And uh, if you have any question, post that in the comments, like, and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.